There's one right there. Finally, finally, that drop shot might work. Caught that fish on a drop shot. It's hot out here. I mean hot. We have a thunderstorm coming up. Ooh, that's a nice bass. That is a very nice bass. Very nice bass. Wow, what a great way to start right there. We've got a thunderstorm coming up over there. It might come a little rain. We're hoping because it is hot, hot, hot. When it gets hot like this, sometimes the fish get really difficult to catch. I mean really difficult to catch. And they have been difficult to catch today. This is the first bite we've had. Whoa, man, that's a good bite right there, though. <laughs> Look at that. That is, well, he swallowed that little worm. You through? Oh, so I'm through now, boss. I'm getting tired. Get me out of here. Help me out a little bit. Help me out a little bit. Oh, man, what a way to start. That's the first bite of the day right there. First bite of the day. That's what I caught him on. It's a little drop shot. I'll be talking about a drop shot a little bit. That's a nice five-pound fish. What a, Ooh, that's some good sugar. Ooh, that's some good sugar. What a great way to start out, you know. The summertime, sometimes it gets really, really difficult to catch fish. I mean, the water gets clear and the water's clear and uh, the fish get sluggish, all the traffic on the lake, uh, people running around makes it a little bit more difficult to catch them. One of the techniques that come along a few years ago was a drop shot. And I'll show you how we're rigging that here in a minute. I just want to get back there and see if I can catch another one. But originally the drop shot was simply a technique that we used for vertically jigging. In other words, we'd drop it right, down, right straight down under the boat. And since that, that, that hook was up above it, and I'll show you what we're talking about there. Most of you know, but I'll show you what we're talking about there in just a second on that drop shot. But it was vertically jigging, drop the sinker all the way down to the bottom, give slack line, just shake your rod, shake your rod. And make that little worm just dance and dance and dance. And it caused some of those fish under those docks to move over there to it. And just had such fantastic action that they moved over there and, and, uh, and would bite it. And you could catch fish around ledges and docks and things where you weren't able to catch them before. So it really, it really turned into a dynamite bait. Now, since that bait came along a few years back, we have, uh, we've started fishing in a lot of different ways. You can actually fish it just like you do a regular worm if you want. Throw it out there, let her fall down to the bottom and, and, and work it back to the boat. I actually, I actually cast a, a drop shot far more, far more than I, uh, that, that, that I fish it vertically. I still fish it vertically. It's a great way, especially if you want to get down 15, 20, 30 feet deep and you got an exact spot you want to drop down on. It's an incredible, great bait to fish down vertically. But I fish it out at a distance. Ooh, I don't know if I had a bite then or not. When in doubt, jerk. Ooh, that's a good fish. Golly, that's a good fish. Oh, he's not as big as I thought he was. <laughs> I thought that was about a five pounder. And this little spinning rod, this little Venom spinning rod, one of the Jimmy Houston rods. It's an inexpensive rod and reel, but it is really a nice rod and reel. I got a little six foot two rod here. Come here, baby doll. You catch a lot of fish this size on a on a drop shot rig. That's one of the things that a drop shot rig is designed to do is to catch fish, and it catches all sizes. Let me show you what we're talking about here. We're talking about a drop shot. I guess the boat will set here. I'm already run into the tree just as well. This is this is my rig right here, and you see what you do is we've got sinker on the bottom it's kind of like catfish rig uh it's kind of like a catfish rig where you put the sinker down on the bottom and you put a hook up here and you put a, a crawfish or a, a minnow or some blood bait or shrimp or liver or whatever on it and you have it on the bottom and this is off the bottom and you tight line for catfish kind of like the same rig we've got a little sinker in here now this rig that i've got all of this equipment right here came in a lucky strike drop shot kit if you if you want to just get started drop shotting that's the easiest thing to do. Those kits are very inexpensive. They come with hooks. They come with uh, the weights. These little weights right here are made where you can just slide the, 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 the line down through it. You stick the line through this little hole right here. You come up and you just slip it down there. Now what it's made for, a lot of times your weight gets hung up. It's made so you can pull your weight off. But now here's what most of us do out here when we use this kind of rig. And they, they, they make long ones also. They make little long ones if you're fishing in the rocks. Fishing in brush, this is probably better. The long skinny ones are probably better in the rocks. But once I, I put that in there, I'll go ahead and just tie a, a couple, two or three half inch knots around there where that won't fall off. Because a lot of times when you get a fish on, when he jumps, it'll throw that weight and you lose your weight. And there's no sense in doing that. And then we come up here, we come up here to the hook. And now this little hook came in the drop shot kit and all it is is just a little small hook. You can use anything 
from all, you know, a number one up to a number six hook. Threes and fours is what we use mostly. And we got an open hook. So all I've done is I take this little worm, and this worm comes in the, the drop shot kit also. I take this worm, I'm gonna kind of rearrange it here because I've caught a couple of fish on it. I like to leave the worm on if it's caught a fish because it's got fish shit on it. And just bring it up here and it's an open hook arrangement. See this right here? Now what happens when you got loose line you drop your bait down and you got loose line and you're shaking your rod like that. That's what that worm is doing. It's going crazy down there and that's what creates the bites. So loose line is really, really important. Now to make this tag in, all I did is when I tied the line, you tie with a long tag and you just simply don't, this is what you normally cut off. You normally cut this off and you cut it on. And then, once you, then you take your tag and you come back and you run your tag through the eye of the hook and come straight down. What that does is it straightens that hook up so the hook is sticking up. So when a fish bites it, it's up as opposed to down. It gives you a real good hook set. So after you tie it, then you take and you run this back through. You see what I've done right there? I've run it back through. Now that's a drop shot rig down there. Now, I don't pretend to be Aaron Martins or Edwin Evers. <laughs> I'm not the world's greatest drop shot fisherman, but here's the cool thing about drop shotting. You don't have to be the world's greatest drop shot fisherman. It's a very simple, easy technique to use, and there's times when the fishing gets really tough that they'll bite this when they won't bite anything else. Originally, we thought it was a technique where we could catch smaller fish, but let me tell you, I've caught a lot of big fish on a drop shot. It'll catch big fish just like it'll catch little fish. It's one of those techniques that's designed to catch whatever's swimming down there. That's a good one there. Oh, that's a good one there. I just have a light rod and reel in here, but that's a good fish. That's a really good fish. I'm gonna try to get him away from this brush. One of the things you can do, you get a big one on a light line or any line, is move the bait away, move the bass, move the bass away from the brush. That's what I'm doing right here, getting him away from that brush. Oh, look at that fish. Good fish. Good fish. Come here, baby. Come here, sugar booger. Ah, I got him. Ah, whoa. Another five pounder. Oh, look at him. See how he was hooked? Just barely. He, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He was just barely, barely hooked. Barely hooked. Look at the belly on that booger. These deep water fish. And it's not super deep. It's not super deep. It's about 10 or 12 feet right here where I'm fishing. Deep water fish are pretty much feeding on shad. Some of them are feeding on crawfish, I'm sure, but they're pretty much feeding on shad out here in this deeper water. And they're not moving much. They stay in the same areas and kind of wait on the fish to come, from, to, come to them. And I'm fishing the edge of a little ditch that kind of ends right here in front of me. And where it ends, where that ditch ends underwater, it doesn't end on top of the water. It looks like the creek keeps going through there. But the ditch actually ends and comes up shallower and it forms a cove underneath the water. And that cove is where those last three fish have been. Kind of a cove, you know. It's one of those cool type places that you look for. You can find it with your locator. Mostly I find these kind of places really and truly by accident. I kind of fish it and catch a fish, and you throw back in there and catch another and catch another one. You get to looking around, you find some little distinct geography that, uh, that causes those fish to be there. When it's hot like this, if you're just getting creek channels and start fishing down the edges of creek channels, looking for bins, little undercut banks, little outside bins where it's undercut, you'll run into some of these places sometimes that's holding a lot of fish. I don't know how many fish are here, but that's three I had hooked, and two of them are, were big ones right here in this spot. I'm gonna just kinda keep pounding this area, see what happens. Not a big one, but it's a fish, pretty nice little fish. Nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that fish. Come in here, guy. <laughs> that's what you call putting them in a cooler right there. <laughs> All they do is have the lid open. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I think that fish wanting to be filleted. What do you think? <laughs> Put him right in the cooler. <laughs> That's a little male fish. You don't get any sugar from me? No way, no way. First fish I caught on black. 
Uh, you know, I'm not sure that color makes a whole lot of difference a lot of times, but sometimes it's the most important thing out there. This is one of the little problems you have sometimes when you catch a fish. You, my doggone drop shots wound totally around everything here. Not too bad. Straighten that baby up. Had to hit that fish a little bit harder than I've been hitting them because last couple I had on have got off. But I'm telling you, the fish that I'm catching, I'm not feeling them bite. I mean, I'm not feeling them bite at all. They're just there, and I tighten up on them. I'm pulling through a lot of grass and stuff, and sometimes I got a little grass on the weight, and, and it's just kind of difficult to know. I've jerked four or five times when there hadn't been a fish there. Like it's in the grass now. Yep. Listen to that thunder. Oh, that's a pretty good storm right there. But that's the one that was right over there. That's already passed by, I think. Unless it's coming from a different direction or something. It's amazing to me you can have all these storms, all these clouds, and there's no clouds get over the sun. That's crazy. 100 degrees out here. Not a single solitary cloud gets over the sun. And the breeze is almost not blowing. Yep, man. I felt that and hit it. That's a good one, too. That's a better fish there. He's out on the edge of that grass line. I moved out on the, oh, look at that fish. Look at that fish. Look at that baby dog. Oh, looky there. Looky there, sports fans. What I'm talking about. Well, you can come over on this side of the boat. That don't get you wrapped around my trolling motor. I guess he's gonna come back over here. <coughs> Boy, he just about got on my trolling motor. That's another five pounder. Yeah, maybe not quite. Well, I don't know. Maybe he is. I don't know. Come here, bear. <laughs> I got him. Oh yeah, it's another five pounder. Look at the way he's hooked. Will you look at that? That's the second one that's been hooked that way. And uh, that one's hooked better than the other one was. Look at that. That's easy to lose that five pounder. Ugh. That fish wanting some sugar. Pull my thumb up. Put me, put me one of the monkey gloves on. Stop that nonsense. I ran off and left him at the house this morning. I'm headed to the lake. Okay, black. Three different colors I've caught them on. The key is getting it where the fish are. That is the key. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Ah. All right. Golly, that never hit the bottom. I'm telling you, never hit the bottom. That's not a giant. Pretty good fish, though. <laughs> Never hit the bottom, right where that last one was. Isn't that something? Catch a big one, catch a little one. Catch a big one, catch a little one. Ain't nothing wrong with that fish. Don't get spoiled, Jimmy. Ah, don't get spoiled. That little rig, that little drop shot rig, will dynamite catch them. I'm here to tell you, that will catch them. That's a nice fat chunk right there. We got a good situation with those storms rolling around. Even though it's summertime, even though it's red hot, Got that worms all tore up. All right, what do we do now, sports fans? Who wants to pick out a color? That four colors come with this little kit. We started with that one. We used that one. We caught them on that one. Here's one we haven't used. I don't know how many. That must, must have about 20 worms in that kit. It's three or four hooks and seven or eight sinkers. Pretty nice rig. This is just, I'm Texas rigging this to keep that, so I don't have that open hook. I started out with open hook. It's just too brushy in here while I'm fishing. Just too brushy. I'm kind of coming back here and just making a little Texas rig with that. Now I'm not getting hung up in the brush. And still catching plenty of fish. Out here in this open water on the edge of this grass line. Looks like a pretty 
decent fish. Uh, just, a little, just a little guy. Another drop shot bass. Okay, I've caught them on all four colors out of that kit. All four colors. You notice how, how, how they get that thing down, but they don't really swallow it too awful often. They get it right down just a little bit. That's a nice little chunk right there. I've caught them on all four colors. I think there's about 24 worms in that kit. And listen to me, that, that kit sells for, sells for less than $10. I mean, I, I think maybe, I'm not even real sure, but I'm thinking maybe six or seven or eight dollars is what that kit sells for. So you see how many fish I've caught today and I haven't used hardly any worms. So you talk about a bargain in fishing, that's one of the biggest bargains you can get. And you should be able to find that just about any store. Find it at Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's, Walmart, just about anywhere. Oh, golly. <laughs> Holy cow, how big is this guy? Good Lance. I don't know how big he is. He's sure, he's sure pulling hard. Might be a big catfish or something. I don't know. Golly. Holy moly, how big is this guy? I didn't think he was all that big. No, he's not a giant, but he's pretty, he, he's not as big as some of them. He's not bad. <laughs> Look at him pull. Is he hooked in the tail or what? It's a heck of a deal. Oh, that's a pretty nice fish. He's hooked right exactly in the dead center of the mouth. Oh, ha. and he's unhooked now. He's not even a five pounder. He's close, but. Not even a five pounder. <laughs> you like to pull me out of the boat. I mean, I swear, nearly pull me out of the boat. Oh, mercy. I've never seen a fish so mean. I take his DNA and sell it, man. I'm telling you. You know, I, the bass, I'm not feeling hardly a single fish get a hold of this bait. I mean, they're just there, heavy, and I'm not real sure. I set the hook, I'm not 100% sure, and it's a big fish, and a doggone bluegill are grabbing a hold of that little bitty worm and running like crazy with it. I've jerked about five times on them. When in doubt, whip it out. That's all there is to it. Don't worry about it. Jerk. Come here, baby. That's a pretty nice fish. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty nice fish. Come here, doll. Not a giant, but a pretty doggone nice fish. Come here, baby. Come here, pal. I'm not being in this boat with me. <laughs> Come here, sugar bear. It's amazing how you hook these fish on this little hook. And very, very few get off. I think I've lost two fish all day today. And they've all been hooked right here, right here. Some of them just a little bit deeper, but all right up here around the top of their mouth. That's a good fish right there. That's a, you know, a good, you know, right at a three pound bass. Really nice bass. Nothing wrong with that fish at all. The bites got really, really slow this afternoon. We finally, finally got a little bit of cloud cover, had all that rumbling around. It's amazing how many storms is around. You look around now, it's getting close to dark and, and uh, it's just, just all of the, all of the storms are gone. Summertime fishing, you're going to hit periods of time when it's just all but impossible to catch the fish. And you just keep fishing. Just keep fishing. And uh, one of the things you're doing in the summertime is you're always looking for a wad of fish. You're always looking for a place where you can catch a bunch. Now, I never did ever really find that wad today. I'm going to fish back here in that same spot again while I caught that one, just in case. <laughs> but I did find a spot or two. I did find a spot or two where where I caught a couple, two or three fish in one spot and uh, some big ones too. One thing about fishing by yourself, you can use the front of the boat and the back of the boat. That fish took off, really ran hard, like maybe there's more fish in there than one in that spot. Well, that's one of the things that happens when you find a wad of them, is they're like chickens. They'll grab your bait and take off running real hard a lot of times. Let's talk one more time about exactly how you rig up a drop shot rig 
And uh, we'll just start right up here with the, with, the, with the rod and reel. You can use a spinning rod or a casting rod, either one. Most people kind of prefer a spinning because a lot of time you're using pretty light, small stuff. I use it on a casting rod a lot. I, normally on a spinning rod, I'll use 20 pound Grand Slam braided line on a casting rod. I might have 15, 17, 20, 12. Just kind of depends on what I'm fishing with. I, but when I'm using the braid, I'll come down here and I'll tie a double uni knot and tie my, my, my uh, fluorocarbon on. I use coated fluorocarbon. I don't use straight cor uh, fluorocarbon, I use coated. It's only about 10 bucks a spool, disappears under the water, and when you tag it, here's the key deal. When you put your, your fluorocarbon leader on there, you want to leave your tag in. This line right here is the tag. So in other words, leave a long tag when you tie your knot. And this is where you're going to attach your weight down to the bottom. You use a variety of weights. You just have to actually use a bell sinker down here on the bottom if you want to. Then you want to come up here with a really a small light wire hook. Now, we don't always use small. Now, here, here's the other thing that I just want to mention real quickly is you want to take this tag in, run it down through the eye of the hook where the hook will turn up because you want this will hold it down and hold that hook up. You can rig it, rig it Texas style like I've done right here. Rig it straight if you don't have much cover. Rig it straight, it works real good. Now I use big worms on here too. I don't always drop shot with small worms. A lot of times I'll use a, a, a big six inch worm, sometimes a pow stick, sometimes a big sneaky stake because it, the, the, the big deal is that you're putting a lot more action on your worm. So this is the way you want to rig a, a, a drop shot rig. You fish it just like you fish a regular Texas rig and you'll have some great results on it. When the fishing's tough, hot summertime or any time when you're having a hard time getting a bite, try that drop shot.